One of the greatest legends in Italy is Ornella Vanoni. And L'Appartamento is called, in English, The Appointment. That is the song I'm going to play for you today. It's one of her most treasured songs in the hearts of Italian people who love this woman. She has had an extensive career. She's an Italian singer, she's an actress, and considered amongst the greatest interpreters of Italian pop music. She's one of the Italian artists with the longest career active since 1956. She's published 112 works, including albums, EPs and collections, and is amongst the singers with the highest number of sales with over 55 million records. Equipped, I think that's 65 now, actually. Equipped with a very personal and sophisticated interpretive style, which she gives, which gives her a highly recognized vocal timbre. Ornella Vernoni boasts a wide and multifaceted repertoire, which include ranges from early mob songs to pop to bossa nova, and then collaborating with some of the most famous jazz musicians, George Benson, Michael Brecker, Randy Brecker, Ron Carter, Jill Evans, Steve Gadd, Herbie Hancock, amongst others. During her 60 year career, many of the most important authors, not only Italian, have written for her. And she's collaborated with numerous artists, including Dario Fo, New Trolls, Ivano Fossati, Sergio Bodotti, Magol, amongst others. He participated She's participated in, in eight editions of the San Marino Festival, reaching second place in 1968 with Casablanca and placing fourth place three times. In 1967 with La Musica e Finiti, in 1970 in, and in 1999. In this latest edition, Ornelia Fanoni was the first artist in the history of the festival to receive the City of San Remo Lifetime Achievement Award. She is also the only woman and the first artist to have won two Tenko Awards and the only Italian singer to have t obtained this recognition as a songwriter. She also won Otago Tenko, which brings the total number of awards awarded to her by the Club Tenko to three. And in 2022, she was awarded the Tenko Special Prize, created specially for the artist. And many other recognitions looking at the research. But today's song is off her repertoire. La Appondimento delves into the complexities of love, longing and disappointment. This song captures the emotional turmoil of waiting for someone who may never come despite the hope that lingers. That's what today's song is about. Let's take a listen. We're going to savour this, and then I'll give you the breakdown of the lyrics. Thank you. 
Absolutely phenomenal. One of the most popular and recognisable songs. And it's done its round recently in 2024 on TikTok. And there's people putting it to diff different things. So she's always making a comeback. And I've, I'm going to react to a duet that she's done. I'll keep it as a surprise. That's coming. In 2023, she's still making incredible music. And that's going to come very soon but not before we've now talked about the lyrics verse one says i've been wrong so many times now that i already know that today i'm almost certainly wrong about you but once more what can change in my life except in this strange appointment it was madness the appointment for me <coughs> excuse me <coughs> excuse me everybody the appointment for me is that time of that month, that particular year, it's almost like going into a relationship and saying, I'll give it six months and I guarantee something will happen. She has an air straight away with this of blaming herself. I've been wrong so many times. In other words, the choices she's made. And I'm almost certainly wrong about you. But there can be a danger here, everybody, that when you go into a relationship, you sometimes carry the negativities of the previous relationships and what happened into that new relationship. And you're just waiting for the signs, waiting for a repetition of what's happened before. And I feel that because when she says, excuse me again, <coughs> oh, today the air is so dry. And when she says, accepting this strange appointment it's almost like it's come around again to hit her hard that the same thing has happened she continues i'm sad amongst the people who are passing me by and that everybody is a reflection of when she looks and she sees people holding hands and they're in couples and she has a negativity about her saying that it's almost well it won't be long before they feel my unhappiness and it continues, but the nostalgia of seeing you again is stronger than crying. 
this sun lights up on my face, a sign of hope. So she's not letting go of this current relationship. She just doesn't want... She's carrying so much burden of previous relationships and of breaking up and the negativity that's involved with that, that she doesn't give up hope. And I always say that even in the most negative situations, I had a very, very violent ex-partner. And I have fell into a very loving relationship. And now having considered this relationship, we're like the best of friends. So karma can come around if you don't give up hope and don't close the door on life and love itself. And she hasn't because she continues. I'm waiting when suddenly I'll see you appear in the distance. Love, hurry, I can't resist. If you don't come, I don't exist. I don't exist, I don't exist. And that is vulnerability, everybody. That is human vulnerability of the heart. She's a broken heart. Love is what keeps us all alive, keeps us all hopeful for a good life, that we meet somebody, we fall in love. I know a lot of people who aren't in relationship with, with, with human beings and they've actually got great lives. They have animals. Other people have their work, their hobbies, where they're meeting people and interacting. And that for them is fulfilling. But in this case, it's about love. It's about wanting that person to come back and prove her wrong and all her dark clouds from previous relationships to be gone. So she can feel when, when they kiss the love on her face, you know, when she talks about the sun, the warm, that's when that's talking about intimacy and kissing. She continues and the weather has changed and it's raining, but I still stay waiting. I don't care what the world may think. I don't want to leave. She doesn't want to leave the relationship. And, you know, her willingness to make another attempt at love, even though they've made mistakes in the past is met with the bitter realization that their love may not be reciprocated. That's their biggest fear. These lyrics paint a picture of sadness and acceptance. And she's grappling with the idea of existence without the person she's chosen to love this other person. The changing weather just mirrors the emotional turmoil within. And then we talk about in the lyrics, the final acceptance, because she says, I look inside and I ask myself, but I don't feel anything. I'm just a remnant of hope lost amongst the people. I know a lot of people who walk and I, I, you know, I'm a coffee drinker. I love to sit and observe people. I'm an author and that's part of my genetic makeup that when you are an author, you study people, you study people at a distance walking by, what the, how they speak, how people interact, all of that. You take in the finer details, but when you're brokenhearted, when you're so feeling this relationship is falling apart too, you walk like a lost soul amongst people. And you could be surrounded by hundreds of people at a, at a festival, and you'd be the one that would feel lost, abandoned, and it's sad. It's sad. A broken heart is something can be in life the biggest failure on your part to allow it to destroy you. And I feel a sense of destruction here going on. She's hopeful. She's lost. But, you know, she's willing to reciprocate the love again, and give it another chance. But will there be? Because she says in these lyrics, love is already late. I can't resist. If you don't arrive, I don't exist. I don't exist. I don't exist. And that is a torture to herself, which she keeps saying in her mind. I'm going to be on my own again. That's what it's talking about. I'm going to be on my own. I'm going to be falling apart. I'm going to be just so alone in life. And she talks about lights, cars, shop windows, streets. Everything gets confused in the mind. In other words, when she's walking, she doesn't know where she's walking to. There's no path. There's no path forward. There's no path to the left, to the right that seems of sense to her. She doesn't know where to walk to, but she knows she needs to walk from her upset and those dark feelings and demons in her head.
because she concludes all I have to do is go back to my home, to my sad life. A reminder of empty rooms, empty bed, no one to cook for, no one to share conversations with. It's an empty environment. Most people love their homes. I'm very reclusive and I love my home and I love doing this on YouTube because it's I have no bosses to answer to. I love being in control of me. But there's other people that go back to an empty apartment and they can't handle that. And I can only have empathy. And she says that life I wanted to give you, you crumbled it between your fingers. She was willing this time to give her all, to make it work, to make it. And then she says, love, I forgive, but I can't resist. She just can't resist being a person that wants it, desires it, needs it. Millions of people around the world want it. And she says, now I don't exist forever. I don't exist. I don't exist. And that, everybody, is, once again, a poignant farewell to hope and, and a recognition and resigning herself to the fact that she's going to live a life of solitude. This song overall beautifully encapsulates the universal experience of love lost and the poignant ache of unfilling longing to find it, to hold on to it, to savour it and to make it work. It's a battle between what she had, what she's lost, <clears throat> and what she hopes to achieve in her life, to breathe, to function, to move forward. A lot of people battle it. If you're one of those people, I say, do this. Believe in yourself. Love yourself more than the other person you're falling apart over. Learn to love yourself again. Learn to smile. Learn to smile in company. And once you're comfortable in crowds, once you're smiling, once you come home to an empty apartment and it just feels like your home, not like an empty apartment, you know you're starting to heal. Do it for you. Don't do it for anybody else. Love can be the most wonderful in the world, wonderful thing in the world, but it also can be the most destructive. Thank you for listening, everybody. Ornella Vanoni, one of her most popular songs in her repertoire. Thank you for La Punt Amento, the appointment. <laughs>